Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with this Papal States campaign. So, there are no smaller enemies to attack anymore. We have to go against France. Now, I've been waiting, trying to find the perfect moment. But if anyone is familiar with waiting for the perfect moment, you know that it will never arrive. You just gotta step into it. So... That's what I'm doing right now. So let's go ahead and explain. So I think first we'll go through with explaining what my troops will do. So I've already showed you that we have, let's see, we have Pompeo Gabrielli. He is uh, going to land at Genoa and then he'll march straight on Milan and then to stop the French from reinforcing us. Uh, or reinforcing against us, I should say, at Marseille. I will have the new army under Pietro, and he will go ahead and land at Toulon and march on Marseille. Now, I should say here there has been a change in the um, membership, so we've got a new member. Uh, we lost an old one and we got a new one, so I am just to kind of um, get this out of the way. I'm gonna... I'm forgot... I've completely forgot about it. But I remember it now. I'm gonna rename one of these Grenadiers um, after the um, the guy. So one of these Grenadiers will be named after the new uh, YouTube member, just so we know that. Anyways, they're gonna go for Marseille. Once they're there, either they're gonna head for Milan or they're gonna go to kind of close out the French here. Possibly me handing over this territory to the um, British. Hoping that the British will kickstart more of a campaign on towards uh, France through here. So we kind of close out the borders along here. And then for the third army, I've chosen to activate the Papal States Guard. Which is just tons of militia and then three got the three batteries of six pounders and they're gonna go for the target of Venice so they're not gonna be moving around making big moves I intend them to move in here to kind of capture this before anyone comes in and then they'll block them the French that is from moving here and then hopefully as the Russians are gathering here, they will continue to move through. Now, I note that Russia has lost this, but this one has been going back and forth quite a while. But it's not going to be the Russians and it's not going to be the British that make or break this. It's going to be the Prussians. It's going to be crucial for me to get Prussia to declare war on the French and taking most of the heat, hopefully, away from me because I will s it will be so easy for me to get stomped by the French they have full stack after full stack after full stack the only thing that's gonna save me is the fact that they've got so many different targets to prioritize that I will kinda be able to hopefully slip through and hopefully the French will simply be overwhelmed by all of this and uh, they will be focused on other things and once my plan of securing here then there are um, like options like moving to Vienna re-establishing re the Austrians and going through and maybe re-establishing them um, and then hopefully you know all the powers combining. I I <laughs> I can't show you here, but I'm I've got my hands on either side of the screen, and I'm slowly co closing in on Paris here, as we've got all the different angles attack coming in. So that is the plan. Now, whether or not this is gonna work, it, that's a big if. Um, but that is the plan, anyways. Now, just in case, because just as I was starting this, the French have started moving a lot of smaller forces around here. A stone's throw away from Rome. So I have recruited a general. So we've got Cesare. Or Cesare, if you want to do uh, Foscolo. That is uh, going to go ahead and defend it with whatever troops spawn. And I have gone ahead and built a fortification. 
So Rome isn't going to withstand a major attack, but it will stand against smaller attacks. Like, it won't roll over as soon as someone approaches it. Also, it's going to be really important. Every single one of these locations that we capture is going to be turned into supply depots. And Rome is going to be turned into a supply depot as well. Or the university is going to be turned into a supply depot. With that said, any everything is kind of already set. So the only thing I need to do now is I need to phone up old Boney and say, Hey, I'm declaring war on you. War has started. Catalonia, Russia and Great Britain uh, join me in the war. Prussia, Sweden and Portugal don't join me. However, as we are protecting a lot of child predators, we are gaining a lot of money from that. So I've got over £600,000 almost out... I was about to say 700,000, but that's not it, because uh, I'm bad at math. 600,000 pounds. So that's plenty enough to rope in these other factions. So we're going to start with the Prussians. And I want you to join my war against France. And I'm going to offer you the timely sum of 50,000 pounds. Will you agree? Yes, they will agree. And the thing is, I want everyone. We want everyone. It's like that guy in, what's he called? The Professionals. Um, Leon, the Professional. Uh, I want everyone. We need everyone. So we're going to, even though Portugal and Sweden is probably not going to do that much, at least they won't be trading with the French. And I want to make it clear to France that everyone is against them. So we're going to get everyone in on this. Except Denmark. Because Denmark currently holds Norway. And we, as we all know. <laughs> Denmark. But in the shape of Norway. It's like. Could it get any worse? Uh, probably not. Jokes aside. Uh, all of Europe. <laughs> besides Denmark. Is now at war with France. Oh, of course, Switzerland, but who cares about them? Um, let's put our plan into action and hope to God that the Prussians actually do invade. So we're going to start with the Papal Army and they're going to land here. Tutti tutti, shut up and go! That's what I say. You can tutti tutti later. Right, so my Swiss Army is landing now. Okay, I thought I was under the impression... Okay, I guess... it's It just work. This kind of hampers the plan. I was under the impression that if you landed on a port, you could march immediately. Um, just like when you're picking them up at a port, you can march immediately. While you can't if you pick them up off the side. Right, that's not super good. Because I was hoping to take a lot at first turn and kind of shock the French command. But clearly that's not the case. Um, we're going to go ahead and push in the forces though. Uh, even though we're running into problem right away. One thing that I do realize here uh, is that I... It was quite a while ago since I checked the ports. So I'm hoping... Once again we're hoping on God to intervene. And make sure that there are no naval forces hanging out in these ports and there aren't great so i am able to land my forces and this army cannot move either but at least i have landed them this island is pointless i'm not going to go after that until probably never actually because uh, it's so kind of out of the way and there's a lot more important areas to go after and uh, you know what with that our plan has been put into action and the war has been started. Uh, did I get Portugal to join in? Yes, Portugal is at war. Everyone is at war. Great. Right. Le fingers crossed. No, fingers crossed. I got God on my side. This cannot go anything but good. With that, let's end 
turn and see how the French react to this invasion. Oh, just before we go, if you haven't noticed, I have an extensive spy network that I've set up. So I've got a spy in Paris, I've got a spy in Milan, and then I've got agents in Marseille, I've got agents here in Torino, I've got agents in Strasbourg, in uh, Bavaria, Munich, I've got agents in Venice, and I've got a spy in Vienna, and then another agent over here in Budapest. So that's why we have an extensive spy network kind of stretching across French conquest here. Anyways, with that said, I feel as though we are ready to end turn and prepare for France response. We're back after the end turn, and unfortunately for me, the fortress at, Vie at uh, Venice has been beset by a French army. So we've got uh, Imperial Guard Dragoons and a number of different uh, Young Guard Trilleur, uh, 12th Light Infantry, the Belgians, some nasty artillery as well. So that has become a strong position. I should actually move up the army. And lay a proper siege so I can see what they've got. Uh, okay, so it's a lot of different types of units. The guns ain't going to do much for them. But these proper units is going to do a number on my militia. Um, so we'll start off just laying siege to start off with here. Uh, I did n note Napoleon is here within marching distance, so I'm gonna have to. D I can't end turn. I have to fight this battle. Um, then over here, we've got quite the sizable force gathering around Milan, with a lot of units. Could be easier then to move on to Reno first. But Milan is like the prize because we gather this entire valley here and if I take Florence I can build that into supply depot and we can actually supply our troops in Italy. And then down here all the troops out here went ahead and moved in to Marseille which isn't great. First things first I'm gonna take my agent out and he's gonna go ahead and march and figure out what the enemy's got over here which isn't a lot so that's good but I feel as though all of the three areas we um, are attacking it feels like this is probably gonna be the easiest one uh, over here at Marseille and then this will probably be the last one because even though it's my most veteran army and that's why I set it to the most important goal which is to take this um, I feel as though this one is probably second uh, my second choice of attack and then the important one for the third uh, and given the time it takes for each battle it might be split up one per video but I'm not entirely sure we'll go ahead and start with this one and we'll see how we come along so Marseille Pietro is attacking Marseille hopefully to take this oh I just noticed this what is this coming down Oof, that's a full stack as I said the thing is I could be waiting for the perfect opportunity forever it was never going to appear Ooh, nice uh, well, I know the Prussians are here in full force then. That's good. Um, but yeah. I I mean, this is... This was a meme campaign to start off with. But I'm gonna definitely put my best effort into winning this. With that said, let's go into our first battle of this campaign. We got 5,000 loyal papists on the Pietro against the uh, godless French revolutionaries at Marseille. And with that I will say no more. Strike up the drum and march to war. Really quickly here is our deployment. I've got my 12 pounders up here on the high ground. 
we've got the two Grenadier units, one of which am I going to name? Probably the one that gets uh, points for this battle. The horse guard is moving forward immediately. Let's not try and lose the cannons the first thing we do. As someone mentioned, I should probably group the units into groups, so that's exactly what I've done. I guess we're not gonna go, be able to go that far. So, yeah, my howitzers have started blasting. Let's see, I've got the uh, guard cavalry out on this side. Okay, guard, ca guard cavalry being deployed on that side. Okay, let's deploy squares to protect ourselves there. The Hussars deployed on this side. Let's see, this is the 4th uh, Brigade. Might be better to hold 4th Brigade as it looks like we've got a very big attack of French cavalry attacking our lines uh, to the point where they actually got at one of my batteries and this unit uh, didn't fare too well almost broke due to that which isn't great but now the threat is done for the Grenadiers so the Grenadiers can assume their march and the guard cavalry can now assume their march up on the left. Our men are oh, they managed to break through and get at my cannons. We'll have to counter this with uh, my dragoons. Yeah, they're running up the side there. The enemy guard dragoons is running through my lines. Uh, luckily they were broken. Unfortunately, my so was uh, both my artillery units and they won't be able to move on the attack here. Our men uh, are running, sir. Who broke now? Oh, the artillery. All right. Local partisans, they should be easy enough to break. Bloody strong French cavalry. I knew it was going to be hard. I didn't realize it was going to be this hard and that the French already broke us. Uh, another problem here with all these stupid squares is the squares have a tendency to shoot each other. Alright, can I get the 4th Brigade on the move now, okay? With the Hazars. Um, let's go ahead and uh, break down the squares. So Oh shit, they're behind my lines. They regrouped behind my lines. And they absolutely eviscerated my howitzers. So right off the bat, I've just lost my two howitzers, which is not great. It's not a great start. I'm going to bring the troops forward here to aid this. A lot of this is local partisans, so uh, I've got my... Big guard cavalry unit, big boy units, setting up right behind the hill there. But I do have another one of these bloody guard dragoons of the enemy moving forward, so I don't like that. But let's see if we can't get these um, these other brigades then into the action. Can I get third brigade in there as well? And fourth, moving forward. Have we not beaten these guys yet? Oh, they've started uh, shooting here, which isn't great, but it's going to prompt me to charge rather than move my troops. So here goes the charge. The guard cavalry moved into action against the French lines. I'm hoping this one breaks first and that will prompt the other one to break as well. At the same time we've got 2nd Brigade is now hurrying into position. 
We have a little bit harder time breaking the line infantry over there. But they are soon broken as well. And we're going to take our times to slaughter them. Um, right, we've got units attacking here. I'm going to move these two to just kind of hold off. My Hussars isn't going to survive in a full frontal attack against these, but currently they are not facing me. Did we finally beat these guys? Right. Dragoons in general up to the front line. We absolutely slaughtered those two units. And I will kind of just regroup the guard cavalry on the hill here. Let's push onwards with the guard. The 12 pounders. I want the 12 pounders to shoot at the guards. How many guard dragoons does these bloody French dogs have? Oh, why aren't you not with fired well? I didn't want these two to fire at well. I don't mind the ones on the bloody front line to fire. Okay, we got another charge going in. This is the guard dragoons that I'm aiming for. I will aim for the other one then. I, I'm hoping the line holds. If it doesn't, we got the dragoons right behind ready to uh, shore up the defense here. I'm sure the French won't hold. Oh, I just by my guards just bypassed this local partisan unit. You know what? Let's move in hard on that guy and charge him. Actually, All right, we broke them there. However, this unit was uh, severely damaged. I'm gonna just move them slightly so I open up a hole for these to march through or charge through, and then I'm gonna conduct a melee charge here. Let's go ahead and get these two uh, units situated back here as we surround the French. We've got a charge going in here. The partisans, I'm hoping they won't stand. I'm bringing in the general. Let's get the two guard cavalry to surround the enemy on that side. Um, let's hold off on the hussars. The enemy is kind of closing in there. Let's start moving through the woods. Oh, looks like looks like the enemy is coming after us there. Going after the hussars. All right, now the hussars might be able to Oh, no. Actually stay within the square then. Okay, the enemy is uh, mobilizing the troops to attack here. I will counter by charging. We moved into the square. This attack is uh, facing quite the trouble. Actually, move out of the square and set up to fire. And you will drop your square. The Hussars will be moved forward and hopefully we can do some damage shooting at this unit. Meanwhile, these troops aren't doing that great. There's cavalry fighting up here. And then the guns were sent away over there. With them broken, I'll bring the cavalry back once more. I want the enemy to keep moving into this fighting area rather than moving away. Right, let's uh, make sure that this guy doesn't come back. And then the other one will punch through towards here. I've got three units that have nothing to do. They'll move through there. You will move towards this. Now, punching this one through here is not going to go well. But I'm hoping that we'll do enough that these guys will start to be turning this way. And once they start to question where they're supposed to be going, that is when this one will punch through the line here. Losing a few men as we retreat to cavalry units over here. These guys are taking heavy damage. 12 pounders. And I fear they're probably only shooting us in the back, aren't they? 
Uh, Hussars keeping the enemy uh, heavy cavalry uh, running. Let's go ahead and punch this through. Okay, we're gonna break there. This guy is coming through here. Let's have the Grenadiers quickly turn and face that way. And then this guy moving towards there. You moving closer. And then why don't you move closer there. And actually now the the opening is over here instead. Oh, they continue to fire upon us. I uh, thought I'd moved out of range for that. The Grenadiers though, shooting up through the sides. The problem here, of course, is our uh, replenishment rate is dog shit. And so I cannot really afford to lose many men at all. They continue. They continue to follow after here, completely oblivious to the fact that they've got the guards firing up through their side. I mean, the other guards are red, right? So to make it easier, we might call these the the blue guard then, and the other ones the red. They're turning their backs on the guard cavalry. I will have this one now move through. And in the last movement, you will move on the attack. As much as I... Oh, this one breaks just by seeing that. So I will go after this one. Once this one breaks, I'm sure the local partisans right behind will break. Order a general advance for all troops. The enemy was broken over here. Let's make sure that we uh, get rid of all of these. Turn towards that unit. And uh, as we move forward, actually charge these. The partisans are the last ones. The local militia is the last ones to hold. However, against my dragoons, they don't even st they don't really stand a chance especially now as an infantry regiment comes charging in as well you're breaking just from charging down uh, retreating troops are you really that squeamish of uh, performing war crimes right the enemy has been destroyed this was a town, so the battle is over. We don't have to worry about chasing them down. Everyone who dies here will be... Uh, their, their points will be spread out among the troops. Right. Wonderful. So the first victory in what is proving to be a very difficult campaign.
we managed to destroy their force. Unfortunately, I lost 1300 men. 1300 men, which will take a long time to replenish, especially as there's a second army coming in from the north. Hopefully that one will be redirected, seeing our victory over here. But uh, one can only hope to be uh, so uh, lucky. Um, cavalry made chevrons and then the howitzers. I thought almost that they would get destroyed in the battle. When it comes down to it, highest kills are for the cavalry, followed by an infantry regiment. Yet, sadly, that one did not get any points. I guess the batteries here get post-battle experience just because of their the kills that they uh, get awarded afterwards. Because there's so few of them left then the experience becomes higher for them. I don't know. Because they didn't really do much in the battle, did they? But there we have that. We're gonna go ahead and uh, set it up. We're gonna go ahead and build. Oh, the roads aren't even proper here. We get 1% from building proper roads, but the thing is I've got a half a million so we might as well start that project and then we will start to build a supply depot. So we got that underway. I wonder, we don't even, we don't make the bridge and even so they would intercept before the bridge, I think. Um, it would be if I decide not to bring the cannons, I could push up there. And even if they intercept, there might be a bridge battle. Which could be a lot better than to fight... Oh, actually, I got a bridge right here. What am I talking about? Um, so what we saw is there's not a lot of troops there. So what I can do is... We'll leave some troops... To hold down the town. Although I do not need a lot, actually. Because there's very little unhappiness for us taking this. So... I will j leave the ca cannons I probably have to bring with me because they will take a long time to bring up to the bridge. But the cavalry will be quick to deploy. So we bring out the army, we set them at the bridge and we leave the cavalry then we'll quickly join Sir, these go, go. as this guy goes ahead and attack. Now he can cross the bridge here and try to go on this side but that will slow him down and I will be able to redirect my force really quickly to uh, counter that, so he's not going to get anywhere there. Now for the next video I'm thinking we'll attack then here, we'll have this siege battle. It'll take a long time to conduct it, but I feel like siege battles are usually not going to be favoring the AI. Um, so I pretty much got this one in the bag, Un unless of course there could be there could be some uh, there could be. I mean, I I'm more think I'm more confident in winning this battle here than I am with this one. But the enemy is going to be contained within those walls, and I'll probably have quite a good time beating them back. I don't have to, as it looks right now, I don't have to protect Rome. So my gamble to send the guard after uh, Venice seemed to have paid off. And for our first battle we have taken Marseille. I wonder if I punched the cavalry and just went straight here. If I have enough of my cavalry units to just surround this force and destroy it and take this over immediately. I wish the British were more active. It might have been a mistake to actually create Catalonia. Because it could have been uh, better for the British to have it. Because it's in their victory conditions. And they might have been more keen to move on into France. Had they, um, had they been able to take this. But also now, like I've... You know, we've got a pretty big allied army being built up here, plus a uh, navy. So, uh, with that, it's pretty good. And I think with that, we'll go ahead and end it. 
So, even though we are really set with challenges, we're starting off pretty okay. But I'm, I'm still leaving here if you with some really great cliffhangers in terms of the Siege of Venice. And then the Battle of Milan, which is going to take place later on. So, uh, yeah. Stay tuned. And you know what? I'll say as I always say. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. And hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye. Bye.